story. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has finally taken to X to say, and let me quote him, he's saying that India has created yet another landmark. India's first solar observatory, Aditya L1, has reached its destination. Ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed a momentous occasion, not just for ISRO, but the entire nation. A very proud moment. Prime Minister Modi taking to X to congratulate ISRO also. He's saying that it is a testament to the relentless dedication of our scientists in realizing among the most complex and intricate space missions. I join the nation in applauding this extraordinary feat. We will continue to pursue new frontiers of science for the benefit of humanity. Uh, Prime Minister Modi taking to X to finally confirm the news. The big maneuver that was being embarked on by ISRO has finally been achieved. And he's saying he's gone on to Lord India's Aditya, one L, uh, Aditya L1 mission. He's saying that the final maneuver has been achieved. The news has been shared by Prime Minister Modi on X. Uh, and now, as we all know, ISRO will finally be studying the sun. All right, I'd like to quickly go across uh, to Mr. Raza, who continues to stay with us. Mr. Raza, indeed a momentous occasion for not just the team of ISRO, but for the entire nation. Prime Minister Modi finally confirming uh, this feat. I'm sure that all the scientists who are looking at the sky and sun and solar system must be extremely excited with this success. And ISRO team and all those institutions which have contributed should be their scientists should be uh, congratulated at this moment and the entire nation should congratulate them it is not uh, that the scientists have not been doing their work scientists become visible when such a thing happens to the nation but behind what has been achieved is a long arduous road which they have traveled and therefore, it is extremely important that we recognize and give due credit to our scientists uh, in the country for their very, very hard work. Things don't uh, achieve success unless you have put in hard work of many, many years. Right. I still remember those days when uh, the, the first rockets were being shot and they were transported on Balgari. The bullock card all right uh, mr raza i'm running short of time let me also take my next question from our correspondent srishti chaudhary srishti do break it down for us what a momentous occasion this is also a massive landmark as far as space studies are concerned for isro that too at the global level Definitely, definitely. So 2024 will be marked as the starting point of our studies when it comes to our first ever solo observatory in space, which was Aditya L1. So now begins the mission life for Aditya L1. Uh, remember, we were talking about all the seven payloads. So all, uh, so once the orbit is, uh, so the orbit has been captured. So now what will happen is that ISRO will take some time and ensure that it's a stable orbit, and then all these payloads will be gradually switched on. Uh, we were talking to Professor Ramesh. He is uh, the senior scientist from the Institute of Astrophysics, and he told us that the primary payload of uh, this mission, which is a visible emission line coronagraph, will be switched on around the end of January. So and then the uh, 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 collection of data. Data would happen. So it's going to be a lot of uh, uh, observations which are going to come out of Aditya L1. It, it, it's an exciting phase for the astrophysicist of our country who had been counting on this mission for a very long time and integrated these payloads which are now aboard uh, Aditya L1. So it's the first ever solar observatory in space uh, for India and uh, will right. uh, study study various dynamics of the solar atmosphere and the uh, different Absolutely. layers. Uh Mr. Raza, if I could bring you in on this aspect, when you're talking about how Aditya L1 will now be studying the solar surface and there will be data that will be uh, gathered, what is the kind of data that we are talking about and how this will impact uh, all of us in our day-to-day -day lives? Uh, but uh, before I answer this question of yours, let me make it make a point here sure. that sitting in in uh, bangalore or uh, in various laboratories uh, 1.5 million kilometers is pretty far away and therefore the maneuvering is done by now artificial intelligence mm. mostly which means 
that once we are sending a signal, we have to be prepared for it to reach when it has to reach there, which means that we have to calculate everything if we are trying to manage things from here, it does take time to reach a signal there. All right. And therefore, the maneuvering becomes extremely, extremely delicate and very, very complex. But coming to your question, that what is it that we want? What kind of data is going to come? There are particles which are emitted from sun. There are rays, waves which are emitted from sun. There is heat that comes to us which we experience, there is light, visible light that comes. And there are many invisible things which we can't see from naked eyes. So all these things have to be studied. The data will come related to what kind of magnetic, uh, 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 magnetic uh, uh, perturbations happen there uh, because of, at this point, because of the sun, uh, what kind of corona activities happen there, what kind of solar uh, winds come to us and what kind of uh, flares happen there. All right. Really I'm afraid, Mr. Raza, we'll have to leave it at that because I'm running short of time. But what a momentous day to have this discussion. Many thanks to you, Mr. Gohar Raza and Srishti Chaudhary for bringing in all those inputs. And